My name is Chris and today we're taking a look at Project's new X8 mass loaded high end turntable. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! Ask anyone who's not an audiophile or music nerd and they'll tell you that the thought of spending $500 on a turntable seems absurd to them. Sure, the vinyl hobby is enjoying a massive publicity of its current resurgence, but your average listener just doesn't seem to want to shell out that kind of money for a record player. Mention to that same person or friend that you're thinking of spending over two grand on a turntable and they'll probably look at you like you have three heads. This isn't anything new to those of us who have dedicated far more time and money into this hobby than we might care to admit though, and that is indeed the target audience for Project's new latest high-end offering, the Extension 8 Mass Loaded High-End Turntable or X8 for short. With a retail asking price of $2,500 here in the US, this turntable isn't for those who are just kicking the tires when it comes to collecting vinyl. No, this turntable is more for the crowd that already has a vested interest in higher end pressings, particular cleaning methods, and a dedicated two channel system that is most likely the enemy of their friends. That is, if their friends even really care about that sort of thing. Mine don't. Normally, I'd take the time here to tell you about what you can find in the box, but I can just do that as we go along considering all the things I'll be talking about came in said box, and I'd rather dive into the particulars of this turntable. So just what is the X8, who is it for, and what's with the mass loaded high end moniker? Excellent questions all, but let's start with the mass loaded high end phrase that you'll find accompanying all the marketing surrounding the new X8. Mass loaded, plainly speaking, refers to the fact that this turntable is f***ing heavy. Okay, it's more than just that, but with a total weight of just over 30 pounds, this beast is not for the faint of heart. It is heavy, it is dense, and it has a purpose, eliminating vibration and resonance at all costs. Underneath a massive MDF plinth, you'll find three adjustable aluminum feet that are TPE damped, plenty wide, and heavy duty enough to keep the substantial X8 stable and level during playback. The one-piece precision machined aluminum platter that also includes TPE, or thermoplastic elastomer damping, in the form of a ring, sets in the bottom of that can help with vibration and resonance control, comes in at over 11 pounds all by itself. This rests upon an inverted ceramic ball bearing that has magnetic support underneath to help the platter spin freely and easily for improved stable playback. You'll clearly see here just how smooth and effortless the platter spins, and this outstanding motion helps to achieve a wow and flutter of 0.11 and 0.10% respectively in 33 and 45 speeds. While the solid MDF plinth and machined aluminum platter are what makes for the mass loading, they're also the start of what is the high-end quality to which Project refers. From small details like the subtle, flashing blue LED light that lets you know when the table is up to speed, switching from 33 to 45 speeds, or back, to the completely silent motor that sets everything in motion, there were simply no shortcuts taken here, just as there are no compromises with this turntable's tone arm. The more eagle out of you might recognize the 9cc Evolution 9-inch carbon fiber tone arm from such other models like their Extension 9 and 10 turntables, which retail for $3,500 and $5,000 respectively. Another fine example of what trickle-down technology can bring to the table, no pun intended. The Evo 9 tone arm is created from a single piece of carbon fiber and a conical shape to help avoid standing wave reflections. When you consider that this tone arm retails for $1,100 all on its own, you start to see just how serious Project were in the construction of the X8. This tone arm was able to characterize a definite sonic difference between my clear audio concept and the X8, and I found the X8 to have a bit more clarity and presence because of this. No small feat considering how well the Satisfy Black arm from Clear Audio is made. The Evo 9's carbon fiber is not a shell either, as there is no aluminum tube interior. This is a single, incredibly stiff, and surprisingly light piece of carbon fiber to help achieve the best sonic performance it can with any cartridge you might attach. Speaking of which, here in America, and Latin America I'm told, you'll find the Sumico Moonstone cartridge standard with the X8, and in Europe you'll find the Ortofone Quintet Blue. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what they're getting in Canada, as I was unable to uncover that information, but those of you from the Great White North can think of this as an exciting prize just waiting to be uncovered. It can't be any more boring than some of the other hobbies in which you participate, right? My review sample came equipped with a Sumico Blue Point No. 3, which would be an additional cost, and I would dare say that this is the bare minimum you would want to have when picking up a turntable such as this. As a matter of fact, I would suggest buying the table without a cartridge at all, which would then retail for about $2,000 and simply adding whatever you think best. This is, of course, a discussion that could carry on for days all on its own, but suffice it to say that an investment on a fine moving coil cartridge would be money well spent. 
I can say though that spending a good amount of time with the Bluepoint, I found it to be a capable cartridge in its own right. Giving a few spins to the Analog Productions 45 RPM release of Muddy Waters' Folk Singer, I found that the X8 and Bluepoint combo delivered great stereo separation. There was a nice wide soundstage and there was no absence of clear sonics in the highs. The bass response was solid and had weight when played through my SVS 3000 micro subwoofer paired with the Bucart S400 Mark IIs I still have on loan. Subtle details were clear with this pressing, such as string noise, muddy slide moving up and down the neck and occasionally hitting the frets, and subtle plucks of the guitar strings. His vocals felt accurate and had enough depth to make him sound convincing. With My Conception from jazz pianist Sonny Clark, as released on the Blue Notes Tone Poet series, I found that the Blue Point portrayed horns with a bright and lively sense, and there was a nice balance between the lows of the acoustic bass and the sharpness of the horns. There was a minor distortion of the trumpet on the third song of Side 2, which is the title track, that I didn't get anywhere else with my time on the turntable, but it may very well have been the pressing. I'll have to dig deeper into that once I put my own personal turntable back into the mix. Lastly, I put on a copy of Santana's Abraxas that I found somewhere along the line in my record collecting journey. Even though it wasn't a fancy copy of the album, the imaging was still prevalent with a very strong showing in the vocal department. The bass was authoritative, if not a little booming, but the album on the whole had a very smooth and even performance. Small instruments like chimes and strings had sparkle, even if they were a little thin up top, but again, this could very well be the pressing that I had. Something Bob Ross would call a happy accident came to pass when playing at Braxis, as the Evo 9 tone arm made excellent use of its inverted bearing, arm bearing, and anti-skating counterweight to keep the blue point tracking accurately in spite of the moderately warped pressing I received. Through all the ups and downs, the sound never fluttered nor faltered, and the well-earned reputation of the Evo 9 tone arm was on clear display. Another one of the quality features on the Evo 9 is its 5-pin DIN connection. Unlike the regular 4-wire connection commonly found on other tone arms, the Evo 9 has a 5th wire that grounds it as well. This ground certainly played a role in the improved sound I heard, as it helps eliminate noise, making for a more rich and clearer playback experience. It also opens up the option to connect a balanced line to a phono preamplifier that can handle it, such as the Project Phonobox S3B, which retails for about $499 and will also be reviewed here shortly. Unfortunately, I was unable to take advantage of this connection while I had the X8 in my possession, but even without hearing this particular improved sonic performance, I would still feel confident in recommending it due in part to my experience with balanced output phono stages in the past. If you haven't had the opportunity to hear a balanced phono stage before, I would highly recommend making it a priority. The sonic differences truly are night and day, and it's certainly worth the financial upcharge you will generally encounter. Much to my surprise, Project included a power adapter with a cord that was long enough to be functional as well. While I would certainly recommend looking at an aftermarket power supply with a table this nice, it's refreshing to see something that is more usable in the box instead of their standard 4-foot cables. You also find a hinged dust cover at no additional cost, which I probably don't have to tell you is a nice change of pace. I find it eternally frustrating that other manufacturers consistently charge separately for a dust cover to protect your investment. The available finishes are another feature worth mentioning. Coming in a high gloss black, high gloss white, and a real wood walnut veneer, you'll have an option for a finish that will most certainly fit any taste or design style. The deep, rich gloss black on this sample unit I received was incredibly well done, smooth, and looks great from every angle, even if it was a little dust prone. But for all the high-end features and quality construction, what did I find with the X8 that I didn't care for as much? As you might imagine, not very much. Keeping in mind that these caveats may be of little to no consequence to you, and certainly not deal-breaking measures for me, I must say that I wasn't overly fond of the belt found on the X8. While there was never any issue with speed control or noise, I have indeed seen belts like this that seem to have a melted butt joint come apart after moderate use. On the plus side, they are inexpensive and readily available should you need to replace them. The next item has more to do with ergonomics than actual function. For whatever reason, I just didn't particularly care for the location of the power button underneath the plinth on the X8. It's not that it was hard to reach or find, but it did seem like it was mildly out of the way in form. It was just clunky, for lack of a better term, but certainly functional, which of course is its point. Interestingly enough, as much as I commend Project in their construction and performance of the Evo 9 tone arm, and including such a high-end performance piece on this turntable, the finger lift just never really felt right in my hands. The smooth carbon fiber made for a slightly insecure feel when combined with the stout nature of the finger lift itself. It was just more wide and short than what I'm used to with my clear audio concept, and I felt like it could slip out of my hands from time to time. Of course, with the tone arm lift in the up position, there's really nothing to worry about, but it was just a little unnerved. 
I might also include that I'm not a fan of the string and weight anti-skate system, but with it being such a ubiquitous system from several manufacturers, this really isn't a detractor, just a preference. The same can be said for how the entire tone arm assembly moves when trying to adjust the VTA. I would prefer that the tone arm move up and down without a side to side motion. Again though, these minor observations might not matter to you in the least, and they certainly do not detract from the quality of the turntable. So what are my overall thoughts on the Project X8? There are several choices in the $2,000 price range for quality turntables these days from a wide variety of manufacturers. As the hobby grows and the availability of hi-fi products comes more to the forefront once again, our choices seem to continue to grow as well. This is excellent news for the consumer. That said, the quality in some of these $2,000 turntables might not live up to the expectations to which we've become accustomed. I can say with confidence that the Project X8 is not one of these. When looking at the caliber of the tone arm alone that is found on the new X8, it's difficult not to recommend this piece for consideration to those who are serious about upgrading the quality of their turntable. Factoring in the substantial build quality of the plinth and platter, the excellent finish, the fact that this is being built from the ground up and not just assembled by Project, and the minor touches like an included dust cover and a magnet built into the tone arm keeping it in place when it's upon its rest, it would be impossible not to see the dedication to their craft in creating this new model. If you have a project dealer near you, I can assure you it will be worth your time to go see this new piece in person. If you don't have a project dealer near you, I can assure you that it will be worth your time to make a drive to go see this new piece in person. The weight and consistency of the platter, the smooth, fluid motion of the tone arm moving, and the overall feel of this turntable in general are things that can only be described to a certain point in video. While I have done my best to do so, sometimes you truly just need to see for yourself. This is one of those times. Thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thanks to you for stopping by to watch, and I look forward to next time.